What could be stranger than a super yacht during a time of economic trouble? The answer is, of course, a terry yacht, which is the name for boats that are even bigger than super, mega, and giga yachts. The Pangeos is the newest luxury boat, a floating island, three times the size of the Colosseum in Rome. It was named after Pangaea, a supercontinent that existed between 200 million and 335 million years ago. And if you think those are big numbers, wait until you hear how much it will cost to build. Eight billion dollars, say the people who designed it. By the way, it will also take eight years to build, because a large enough dry dock has to be made first. But then, let your imagination run wild. The yacht will look like a massive turtle. Lazzarini design often draws inspiration from the animal kingdom. For example, they previously created a swan-shaped yacht and a 500 million euros super yacht in the shape of a shark. For their most extravagant project, they used the outline of a turtle. If the money is raised, this will be the largest floating structure ever built, which explains why it costs so much. It will be 550 meters, 1,800 feet long, and 610 meters, 2,000 feet wide, and it will look like the hideout of a Bond villain. On the yacht, there will be room for malls, apartment buildings, and parks. Lazzarini says that the yacht will be a full-fledged floating city. It will have room for hotels, shopping malls, parks, and even ports for smaller ships and planes, so that guests can get there in style. And it will have style, since it looks like a terror turtle. It would also have to be built in a place that doesn't exist right now. Saudi Arabia has been suggested as a place by the designers. Before the building could start, about one square kilometer of sea would need to be dredged, and a circular dam would need to be built. The designers have chosen a spot at King Abdullah Port, which is 130 kilometers 81 miles north of Jeddah. Solar panels would provide power, and there would be a place for planes to land on the roof. Pangios is like a real city, in that it is made up of blocks, and it has a port and a main square, around which other buildings spiral. A place called the Upper Shell, which would be surrounded by gardens, would be a place for planes to land. Under the living space, there would be 30,000 cells that would keep the building from sinking. The basement would be made of steel. It would have a huge draft of 30 meters, or 98 feet, and could travel at a speed of 5 knots. But the wings would get their power from the ship's drag and the waves that hit it. Solar panels on the roof would power the yacht. Even though the world is in trouble, super yachts are selling better than ever. Here's why. The Terra Turtle would not leave from a specific port or follow a set schedule. Instead, it would just cruise around, making the journey itself the destination. Again, just right for a Bond bad guy. Lazzarini hopes that building could start in 2033 and take eight years to finish. Want to see it from the water? You can use NFTs to buy anything from a virtual entrance ticket, $16 to a VIP apartment, $169 through a crowdfunding project. That's for a virtual apartment. But if you want to buy a real apartment, you can use that money as a down payment. Now they have to find the rest of that $8 billion. It provides its energy through solar panels and can, if necessary, sail at about 9 kilometers per hour. This is only provided to find a better climate zone for the residents. For now, the address is Atlantic Ocean, as there is no channel large enough to allow it to sail to other oceans. The videos and photos of the drawings are certainly impressive. The facilities even surpass those of the current largest cruise ship in the world, Wonder of the Seas. For example, a harbor area forms the center of Pangios, surrounded by private houses, all kinds of buildings, such as a shopping center, roof terraces, and a runway on the roof. With no destination in mind, Pangios will constantly travel the world. If we didn't know any better, we'd think it was the brainchild of the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman. To make it move forwards and backwards, nine electric HTS motors have been chosen, good for a total of 16,800 HP. And the turtle-shaped Pangios the Terra Yacht is also equipped with flippers so that energy can be generated by breaking the waves. The designers also say it would be able to fly using wings without using too much energy. This would make this superstructure very green. A jet drive transmission will push the terra structure, which will be able to cruise at five knots, Lazzarini said. The big wings will get energy from the breaking of the waves as Pangios sails, and it will be able to sail around the seas of Earth forever, 
without putting out any pollution. Now the question lies, how big will this floating city get? The Pangios is a circumnavigating city consisting of several hotels, shopping malls, parks, ship and aircraft ports, and all other facilities needed to accommodate up to 60,000 guests in the middle of the sea. Pangios is 550 meters long and measures 610 meters at its widest point. The wings, anyway, the world's largest structure ever, was not just not completed. If the ship is realized, it will be the world's largest floating structure ever built. Currently, this lush turtle is still a concept, but if it is up to Lazzarini, they would rather start it yesterday than today. In order for it to actually succeed, the company needs money, so a crowdfunding campaign has been launched. Construction of the immense ship is expected to require some $8 billion and is estimated to take eight years to complete. By the way, you can already buy an NFT apartment or villa in a virtual reality setup from as little as $49. It's all based on crypto, so how much that price will be in real money is questionable with the state of crypto at the moment. I leave this toy to others, such as furnishing your NFT house with your NFT artworks and furniture. I don't see it that way yet. But apparently I haven't been adjusted yet, because a large number have already been sold. And yes, maybe you can have a lot of fun with it for $49. But that's for you to decide. Will you buy an NFT for this project? Or do you also think that NFTs are a waste of your money? Tell us what you think of this original idea in the comments below, and whether you believe it will ever be finished. But before we end this video, what do you think of the other floating city that has been announced at the United Nations Council? Pangios is not the first floating city that will be built. Oceanic Pusan, the world's first prototype floating city, has been revealed in renderings. The goal is to build a community that can adapt to rising sea levels off the coast of South Korea. According to Rose Dykins, UN Habitat, the Pusan Metropolitan City of the Republic of Korea, and blue tech design firm Oceanic have revealed new renderings of a futuristic sustainable floating city. Furthermore, with construction set to begin next year, it will be a reality very soon. I hear you asking, what is the goal exactly? Oceanic Pusan aims to provide a game-changing solution for coastal cities dealing with severe land shortages exacerbated by the climate crisis. Two-fifths of the world's population lives within 100 kilometers of a coastline, and 90% of megacities are vulnerable to rising sea levels, with flood damage to infrastructure costing billions of dollars and displacing millions of climate refugees. Residents are forced to move closer to the water in cities with rapid population growth and no room to expand, driving housing costs to precarious levels and driving out those with the lowest incomes. Floating cities could aid in our adaptation. The prototype of the floating city is made up of six systems that work together to make it work. Zero waste and circular systems, closed loop water systems, food, net zero energy, innovative transportation, and coastal habitat regeneration. Through floating and rooftop photovoltaic panels, these interconnected systems will provide all of the city's energy needs. Each neighborhood will also clean and refill its own water, use fewer resources and recycle them, and have innovative urban agriculture. The floating platforms have outposts and greenhouses, as well as places to grow food. Big Bjark Ingels Group founder and creative director Bjark Ingels said, Oceanix's modular maritime neighborhood will be a model for cities that are both sustainable and resilient. Oceanic Pusan will be the first example of this new type of waterborne urbanism. It will bring the city's unique culture and character out into the water. Do you think that Oceanix's floating platforms can be built on a large scale to serve as the foundations for future communities? And can they withstand climate change in the most vulnerable coastal areas? Let us know down in the comments below.